Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin. Allahümme salli ala Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ve sellem. Selamun Aleyküm brothers and sisters. Welcome back to our very very important topic on the major sins. And we've been discussing magic, sorcery, fortune telling, charms and amulets. And we're just going to revisit the whole issue of fortune telling. And it's very important to understand, my dear brothers and sisters, that one of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Alim al ghaybi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the knower of the unseen. And that is an exclusive attribute. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He knows the unseen. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes that very clear in Surah Al-Jinn, which is the 72nd surah in the verses and the ayat 26 to 27, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says that He is the knower of the unseen. Alimul Ghaybi. So, and he does not let known or he does not reveal that knowledge of the unseen to anyone except Illa Manni Artada Mir Rasul, except those chosen messengers. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does give some of the knowledge of the unseen to his chosen messengers, and he does that. Why? As a type of proof that they are indeed the prophets of Allah. So they are able through the knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them to foretell and to predict and to make known some of the events that will happen in the near future and in the long term future as well. And indeed if you had listened to the series I gave called the proof that Islam is the truth then you would have experienced the explanation of those beautiful sayings of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned about the things that are going to take place before the last days and as you will have known from that that many of those things have indeed already taken place but even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was only given a limited type of knowledge he was not given absolute and unlimited knowledge of the unseen because that is only an attribute that belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, if anyone claims that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself is the knower of the unseen, then that is shirk. That is making the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and giving to him an attribute that only belongs to Allah. Indeed, in the Quran, Allah told the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to say that he does not have access to the treasures of the heavens and the earth. And he does not know the knowledge of the unseen. And if he had that knowledge and if he had that ability, then he would have made sure that nothing except good happens to him and that no bad would happen to him. And of course, really, that is also an insight to human nature, brothers and sisters. We're all desperate in a sense to keep away from us as much evil as possible and bring to us as much good as possible. And that is why people have always sought the knowledge of the unseen from fortune tellers and soothsayers and astrology and things like that. But this is all false and this is all fake. And none of these things have the ability to actually tell you what is going to happen in the future. It is much better for you, my brothers and sisters, for everybody to trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to have a good opinion about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to understand and to know that if you follow the path of Iman and if you follow the path of Islam, and if you follow the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then everything that happens to you is good. Everything that happens to you is good. And this is what Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said. How wonderful is the condition of the believer. Everything that happens to them is good. If they receive some bounty or they receive some blessing, then they are grateful to Allah and that is good for them. And if some sickness falls upon them or some difficulty or hardship afflicts them even the Prophet Sallallahu said even if it is the pricking of a thorn then that person's sins are expiated and if they are patient and then their level with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is increased and that is also good for them so this is so much better than believing in fortune tellers and astrologers and people like that and soothsayers who are only liars who are pretending to know something they don't know and also making shirk with Allah and forbidding yourself from paradise 
by believing in this superstitious nonsense. And you find even in the West that these things are very common, where you find in newspapers and magazines, horoscopes, where they claim to be able to tell you what is in your fate and what you should do and what you should look out for in the day to come, in the weeks to come, in the months to come, in the years to come. And all of these things, brothers and sisters, are lies. They are all lies. And if they happen to get something right, then it is simply because, as a lot of researchers found out, that they only write very general things that could apply to anybody. That is one way they make you think that the predictions they are making are correct. They just say general things about matters that just happen to everybody in their life anyway. And you think, oh yes, that was right, and that's exactly what happened to me. But in fact, if you the cuttings of the previous fortune teller, and this is, he took this column as the astrologer, and he took all those cuttings and he mixed them up, and he just randomly sent them out, and he sat there on the train listening to people saying, oh, isn't that amazing? He got it right, it's happening, just like he said it would. And all he did is he just took clippings and mixed them up and had no order to it. It was all just fake. And people were still thinking it was amazing how he got it all right. And the other thing that could happen, and this is for the people who really do magic, as we mentioned, they actually do have shayateen who listen to the angels discussing the matters that have been ordained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they manage to get things right every now and then. But, of course, this is also a lie and a deception. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is the knower of the unseen. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the one who goes to a psychic or a fortune teller has disbelieved in what Allah revealed to Muhammad. This is what the Prophet ﷺ, if you go to a fortune teller or a psychic and you believe in what they have said, you have disbelieved in what Allah has revealed to Muhammad ﷺ. And in another narration, the Prophet ﷺ told us that if you visit a fortune teller, or a psychic, even out of curiosity, then your prayers will not be accepted for 40 days. Now that does not mean that you don't have to pray. No, you still have to pray because you have to fulfill the obligation of prayer, but you will not get the blessing and the reward of it. That's just from visiting a fortune teller out of curiosity. That includes, my brothers and sisters, picking up the newspaper and reading the star signs out of curiosity or any other type of fortune telling thing out of curiosity tarot cards where they put cards on the table and tell you what their fortune is that is also fortune telling it is shirk if you believe in it you have disbelieved in what Allah has revealed to Muhammad and if you do it out of curiosity your prayers will not be accepted that includes palm reading people who read the palms or they look at the tea leaves. You know, after you've drinking your tea and they say, oh, this is what's going to happen to you. Or anything like that. All of these type of things. Or they look at the flights of birds and they predict what is going to happen by the flights of the birds or by the insides and the entrails of animals. All of these things are omens. They are all fortune telling. And all of these things are shirk. They are all disbelief. None of those things have the ability to reveal the truth about the unseen. Only Allah knows the unseen, and He has given some of that knowledge to His chosen messengers, and there is no other way to know the unseen except that, my dear brothers and sisters. So, Zayd bin Khalid Jahni related, radiallahu anhu related, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam led the dawn prayer at Hudaybiyah, and it rained during that night. So after finishing the, the prayer, he turned towards the people and he said, Do you know what your Lord has said? They said, and they answered, Allah and His Messenger know best. And the Prophet ﷺ said that Allah said, This morning, some of my servants believed in me and they disbelieved in the stars. And some of my servants disbelieved in me and they believed in the stars. As for those people who said, that the rain fell last night was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They believed in me and they disbelieved in the stars. But as for those people who said that the rain fell due to the influence of such and such star, 
they disbelieved in me and they believed in the stars. This is a very, very clear hadith, an authentic hadith, where it is absolutely clear without any doubt that a person who believes that the rain falls or anything happens to you based upon the effect or the influence of such and such star has disbelieved in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as for those people who try and claim things like, for example, well, you know, the stars have gravity and the gravitational effect of the stars when you're born has an influence on the way that you think it's absolute rubbish. And from a scientific point of view, it's nonsense. And the reason is because, for example, the gravitational effect of the head of the woman who delivered you when you gave birth is stronger than the gravitational effect of the stars. If you wanted to make some prediction based upon the gravitational effect of something, it would be better to measure the head of your midwife. This is how ridiculous these things are. Ali ibn Talib reported from the Prophet wasallam that a fortune teller is a magician and the magician is an unbeliever. So there is no doubt, my brothers and sisters, that the person who is a fortune teller is a magician. Indeed, the Prophet wasallam said that no one increases in the knowledge of astronomy except that they increase in the knowledge of magic. And I think it's very clear from what we have discussed so far that the connection between magic and astrology is a very, very close one as the Prophet wasallam. So that is the issue of fortune telling, which is something, my dear brothers and sisters, I warn you to be very strict about, to keep away from it, not to treat it lightly. Even remember the Prophet wasallam warned us, even if you visit a fortune teller out of curiosity, your prayers will not be accepted for 40 days. So don't make jokes about these things. Don't take these things lightly. And there are other things, my dear brothers and sisters, that people unfortunately indulge in, and they take it as a type of amusement, looking at tea leaves, as I mentioned already, just as a type of amusement, playing with things like Ouija boards that claim to be able to tell you certain things. And this is in fact a very, very dangerous thing, and can even involve calling upon jinn and things like that. Brothers and sisters, these are not matters to be joked about. You should not joke about something that is disbelief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You should not make light of something that involves making shirk and disbelief with your creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is a very, very serious matter. Another issue, my dear brothers and sisters, that I would like to bring up uh, before we continue with some of the more specific sins that we are going to be talking about are some other aspects of shirk that we should be careful about. And one of those things that very sadly people fall into is swearing by other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is actually a very serious matter, although people take it very lightly. Brothers and sisters, please, you should not say things like by my life or by my parents. In fact, it is not allowed to swear by anyone or anything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And swearing by anyone or anything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a type of disbelief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Although some scholars mention it is a lesser type of kufr, it is still a type of disbelief and therefore it is very, very serious. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he said that whoever takes an oath by other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or he gave an example, whoever takes an oath by the trust then he is not from us. That was one of the type of oaths that sometimes the pagan Arabs used to take. So whoever takes an oath by other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is not one of us. And this is one of those criterion that we mentioned previously, through which and by which we can know that a sin is a major, major sin. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, they are not from us, the ones who do this or the ones who do that. So here is an example of exactly such a thing. And the Prophet ﷺ also mentioned specifically that, for example, whoever takes an oath by Alat and Al-Uzza, 
He said that that person should take their shahada again. They should say, La ilaha illallah. And that also indicates that swearing by something or by someone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a type of making partners and a type of association with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that needs repentance and it needs that in this case you should actually take your shahada again and you should re-testify that Allah alone is worthy of worship and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is indeed his last and final messenger. Also another issue that you should be very very careful of is to sacrifice only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was told to say, Kul inna salati wa nusuki wa mahya wa mamati allahi rabbil alameen. Say, O Muhammad, kul inna verily that my salah, my prayer, as salati wa nusuki and my sacrifice. Wa mahya wa mamati allahi and my life and my death is all for Allah, the Lord of the worlds. So in this is a proof that sacrifice must be only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you're not obviously allowed to sacrifice in the name of anyone except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The correct way to sacrifice is to mention the name of Allah, to say Bismillah, and that is how you should sacrifice. Of course, sacrificing to other than Allah, sacrificing to idols, of course, that is one of the major agents of disbelief in the time of Jahiliyyah and until today. Amongst those people who worship other than Allah, they of course sacrifice things to their gods and their idols and so on and so forth. And these are considered, all of them, to be acts of worship. And that is something that we should be very, very careful about. And similarly, my brothers and sisters, we find that in the Old Testament, that is also a place where it is really very much warned against that we should not be worshipping or sacrificing to anyone or anything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that also was a very, very common action in the time of the, the old prophets, the prophets before the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There was this matter of things being sacrificed to the idols at the time and there are some very severe warnings against that in the Old Testament. So my dear brothers and sisters, all of these matters are matters that we should take really seriously because they are all from the major sins, all from the things that are really destructive, that will earn the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us. And that what we should do is when we sacrifice, we sacrifice for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we swear, let us make sure that we swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We swear by Allah, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, by him in whose hand is my soul, and so on, by the Lord of the Kaaba, and so on and so forth. These are the types of ways that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to swear. And as for my dear brothers and sisters protecting yourself from evil, then there are things that have been taught to us by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and we should employ those things. So for example, we should blow and spit lightly. One of the ways you can do is to spit lightly into your hands and recite Surah Al-Ikhlas, recite Surah Al-Nas, recite Surah Al-Falaq, and then wipe your body, starting with your right side, and then your left side, wipe your body with that. And you could do that, for example, before you go to sleep, and you could do it at other times of the day if you so desire. You could also make sure that you are constantly in a state of wudu. Also, you could recite Ayatul Kursi, after the obligatory prayers and before you go to sleep at night. Uh, and these are some of the things that you can do in order to protect yourself from evil. And this is much better for you than falling into shirk and going to people who will give you bracelets and anklets and uh, amulets to wear. And these bracelets and amulets, it is no different, my brothers and sisters, whether it is on you, on your car, in your house, or any of these things. The Prophet ﷺ said that whoever puts their trust in an amulet, then Allah will leave them to that amulet. If you think that an amulet is going to protect you, then Allah will leave the protection of you to that amulet, which of course is nothing. 
And that applies to all of these type of things like hanging horseshoes above your door, a rabbit's foot, as in the Western world, these are some of the things that they believe that is going to bring them good luck or avert from them evil. How about the issue, though, my brothers and sisters, of Qur'an? In general, my brothers and sisters, we don't find that the companions of the Prophet or the Prophet himself, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or his companions used to practice writing Qur'an on bits of paper, putting them in things around the neck, or hanging them in the house. We do not find that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions used to do this. They were taught verses of Qur'an to read, they were taught various dua to make, which you can find, alhamdulillah, in the authentic uh, books. For example, Husnul Muslim, you can find many dua that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and supplications the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us to help us to keep away from those types of things. So, I invite you to take resource in those. As for anyone who is wearing an amulet or a bracelet or anything like that, and they think it is going to protect them, they should take it off. It is shirk. This is what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam insisted on. And in, if you know someone or you see someone wearing those type of things, then you should encourage them. And if you are able even just to take it off, and that is, alhamdulillah, a very good deed. Indeed, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that anyone who does that, it is like they have freed a slave. It's like they have freed a slave. So, mashaAllah, this is something that is very important. I encourage you, all of my brothers and sisters, please, when you see these evils, when you see these wrongdoings, not to take them lightly. Enjoy what is right, forbid what is wrong. When you see an evil, try your best to change it with your hand. If you can't change it with your hand, then try to change it with your tongue. If you can't change it with your tongue, then at least hate it in your heart. And that is the weakest form of faith. And my dear brothers and sisters, it is itself one of the major sins that we fail to enjoin what is right and to forbid what is wrong. It is a major cause for the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come upon us, to come upon this ummah, when we are no longer enjoining the right and forbidding the wrong, then it is a cause for Allah's destruction to come. As the Prophet ﷺ said, By Allah, you must enjoin what is right and forbid what is wrong, or else Allah will send upon you a calamity, and you will make dua, and it will not be accepted. May Allah protect us from that. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.